how's it going? This is Roy from Rep My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So welcome along to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today we're going to have a look at the Universal S or Cool S or Superman S. There's, it's got a ton of names and it's got this kind of weird background. So anyway, we're going to have a look at how we model this in Cinema 4D. If you ever want to draw this in pen, it's really easy. It's just made up of these three lines and then you draw lines connecting them together and bang, you end up with your shape. Let's have a go and hop on into cinema and see where we can start. Okay, so you join me here in Cinema 4D for some fun and uh, stuff. Right, so let's uh, let's begin somewhere near the beginning. So the Universal S, right? You may or may not be familiar with this. It's this kind of symbol that you can draw really easily with just by drawing a couple of lines and then connecting them together, and it gives you this symbol. And loads of people drew it as like kids in school, but had no idea why and and that sort of thing. There's a really really good video that actually covers the background behind this symbol and the fact that it's kind of pretty much unknown as to where it comes from by Lemino and I can genuinely I really really cannot say enough about this channel how great the content and stuff that he puts out is but this video on the Universal S is really interesting I would recommend checking that out but for now I was wondering it's quite easy to draw on paper how easy is it to make a 3d model of it it threw up some difficulties I have to admit but it was quite a fun little challenge so I thought right let's have a go how do we do this properly not using splines not using tries n-gons actually modeling it properly and you know starting from a plane so let's first of all nb to turn on our uh, geometry information so we can see what we're dealing with here and i'm going to put this down to one segment by one segment and i'm going to make it 100 by 100 because i'm going to work solely in 100s to make life that little bit easier and i'm going to rotate this round to 90 degrees and go into polygon mode and make this editable so highlight it and press c if we select our polygon we'll see that this side is blue and this side is yellow and we're going to head out in the yellow side because that is the direction of the normal we want it facing forward which is fine so we're going to press d to get the extrude tool and extrude out a little bit and i'm going to make that exactly 100 centimeters in the offset and that way like i say we're going to work perfectly in 100s so let's continue on and we're going to build our shape so we'll do it again we'll do another 100 this time i'm going to rotate it to 90 degrees and then put it to 50 Boom. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually is come into snapping and I'm going to turn on 3D snapping and turn on workspace because occasionally that will be quite helpful to us. Right. And because, again, I want to continue working in 100s just to make it easy so we know we are exact with our model, I'm going to push this up to 50 centimeters. Now, this is an exaggeration for now. Uh, just so that we know we're working correctly. And the same for this one. I'm going to pull out another 100. Ultimately, I don't want this gap to be this much, but I just need to make sure that I've got some geometry being created in these little gaps, because if we don't, then we're going to have some trouble later. So let's create another one, 100. Boom, and we'll rotate that to the 90 degrees. And again, we'll pull this back to 50 like that. And then we'll pull this down to 150. And I think that's, yep, that's in the exact right place. Perfect. So we'll extend again and we'll make that 100. This time we're actually going to pull this one down 100. Perfect. And extract again. Or extrude, sorry, not extract. Right. So we've got another 100. And we need to move this over 200 so that it is in line with our starting one lovely job and we'll extract another 100 there and uh, yeah we'll do again another 100 this time again we do just like we did before where we rotate oh no not like that we rotate it i'm holding shift by the way to do increment and then back to 50 boop and up another 50 so that we are exactly 100 in the middle there and extrude 100 extrude 100 and rotate whoop, to 90 come back in 50 so remember we're doing exactly like we did at the other end i probably could have done this using um symmetry so we only had to do it on one half but actually that probably would have made it more complicated and take even longer so we'll extrude another 100 there and now we need to connect the two together oh i've made a slight boo-boo I forgot to come back up again with all of this lot. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use UL uh, and I'm gonna select that one, that one, that one, that one, and 
Yep, no, that is it. And I'm going to move these all up 100. There we go. I should have done that from that one, but I forgot. So that's fine. Uh, and now we just need to get from here to there. And I want to seal this off. So I'm going to delete that one there. And I'm going to select this one here. And I'm going to do bridge. And I'm going to bridge from there to there. And from there to there. And from there to there. And underneath from there to there. And there you go. All done. Wonderful. Now, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Oh, it was obviously a joke. Um, no, let's get this sorted out. So the first thing I want to do uh, is turn this so it's the right way up. Now, I want to move over uh, 55. I want to just do some organization here. So that's, that's the middle of my scene there. And I want to get this point to the middle of my scene. So I'm going to move over uh, 55. Okay. Now, I'm going to select points and I'm going to select the rectangle selection and I'm going to grab everything on the right hand side. I'm going to bring this in 95. Okay, holding shift to bring that in. Oh no, I'm going to bring it in 90. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. And you see that's now level. It's probably a little bit far, but I'll tweak that in a moment. I'm going to grab these ones at the top and this is what I was saying earlier. This was all exaggerated, so I'm going to bring these right down. Let's actually bring them down to 98. So there's only a two centimeter gap. And again with this one, 98 like so. And let's grab everything on the right and we're going to move these in. One, oh, undo that. Two centimeters. And now we'll grab everything on the left and we'll do exactly the same. Two centimeters. And you can see there we are dead center and we're all aligned and everything is all perfectly in its shape. And boom, there we go. We have now built our model. So it was actually quite easy. Not quite as easy as when you do it using the uh, the pen and paper method, but it's yeah that wasn't too bad. So we could now um, just create a texture, put it in a scene, light it, make it look pretty and whatever. But I want to go one step further, and I want to actually unwrap this, and then I want to make a nice texture inside of Substance Painter. So let's unwrap it. And I have a feeling this is going to be pretty horrible to unwrap because it's a bit of an awkward shape, but we'll go for it anyway. If you're interested in UV unwrapping, I did a full tutorial covering UV unwrapping in pre-22 the other day, which you can see from the pop-out banner above. I am going to not cover the details of what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of do it and talk about it as I go. So if you want the in-depth one, watch that other tutorial and then come back to this. I don't want to spend too long on this section. I just want to kind of get this bit done. I'm going to go to my, oh, there we go. I'm going to go to my UV layout, the, the one that I use for doing this. And I'm just going to do UL and select a few outlines. So I'm going to cut the front out. I want to cut the back out. And I want to cut it something like there. Um, yeah, uh, we'll do the same on the back side there. This is awkward, so I'm going to need to cut that out. And the same for this one. And let's just give that a go. If we go into projection frontal, then relax. Mm, so my problem here is these overlapping ones, so I'm going to have to tweak that a bit so what I might do is actually add some extra cuts mm, it's not ideal but I'm gonna cut there and there as well okay so projection relax apply there we go right oh no that's not gonna be much help to me is it mm, no so let's undo that Let's cut it. Ah, how am I gonna do this? So what's the overlapping bit? It's that and that. Um, okay, I'm gonna try there. Okay, so frontal. Right, and that's now split those. Okay, this is by no means ideal, but it will do for what we're doing right now. So I just need to do a bit of tidying up in here. So let's make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And then we'll go into the absolute god awful monstrosity that is UV island editing inside of Cinema 4D. Right, and we will move 
you know what? Those have lined up pretty well. So I'm just gonna move them out of the way for now. And I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees, something like that, and keep them out of the way. All right, you can sit up there. This one here is absolutely fine. This is the underside. We don't really care about it. It can come out, the, out of the way over there. Actually, no, we do care about that. We need that in a minute. Right, so I'll come back to that. These are gonna be important, but we're not sure which ones yet. This is the top, so we'll position that right in the center for now. And then this is the bottom, right? And now I need to figure out, so that's the underside I don't care about. So that's that one. So that's gonna go from there to there, right? So we need to get that one and position that round about there. It's kind of hard to see. And that's going to be something like that. Okay. And that's going to come down here and be something like that. I just, because that was basically the shape it already had. I just don't want it to be overlapping. So I'm just trying to get it as close as I can to sitting in the right place without overlapping. Uh, then this one and this one, they're the underside. So this one I don't really care about because we're not going to see it. Um, but let's put this there. And we'll put this one there. Okay, so that these guys are like that. So the underside one, we can rotate this. And it's going to be something like that. And we're going to plop that there. And then this one we will rotate. And that's going to be something like that. And we will plop that just there. Okay, and now let's just center these up. We could expand them a bit, but I want to keep everything the same size. And these guys at the top here are pretty much spot on. So, uh, yeah, they're, 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 wow. Okay, yeah, they are spot on. So don't really have a lot of room to play with those. Uh, in fact, I'm going to shrink the lot down to just give myself a little bit more leeway. Um, and I'm going to bring that one up. Oh that one into the scene a bit more there we go right okay so it's not perfect but it is unwrapped so that means we can work with it great stuff so the next thing we need to do is we're going to work in the high poly low poly kind of way of doing this so this is going to be our low poly so this is universal s and this is the low poly one i think i just made that that word up there didn't i there we go so now I want to make a high poly version of that. So let's just do this high poly and the high poly version we will place in a subdivide. And because we've got pretty good geometry, that's that's not too bad. Now I've got a couple of things I want to do here. So I'm going to switch that off. Obviously, you would normally to make your subdivision surface you, to make this nice, uh, you'd do some cuts. So, you know, you'd cut there and there and, and, and you'd get all your stuff you get all your shape like that. But I want to make sure that I'm absolutely uniform throughout the whole thing. So I'm just gonna switch my subdivide off for a moment. With line mode, I'm gonna do UL, and I'm gonna grab the top, the middle, the bottom, and the outer bottom, like that. And then I'm going to, gr and I'm actually going to bevel those. So if I, oops, if I turn this on, uh, and I, let's, come out of the, um, let's go back to start, start up, there we go. Now I'm gonna right click and do bevel. And if we just do this a little bit, I want no subdivisions and I want offset to be something like two centimeters all around. There we go, so that gives us our nice sharp edges all around it. Then, same thing, UL, I want to grab all of the loops where I would need a sharp corner. So I will grab that one, that one, that one, and that one, and that one. So again, I'm going to do the same thing, right click, bevel, do this, and two, boom. And there we go. We have a pretty nice geometry high poly version, which we can come into here and we can put that up to three. And yep, there we go. That is, that's pretty good. All right, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to make a copy of that text because I'm going to make that editable and rename that. Wonderful. So we have our high poly and we have our low poly. Let's get the low poly and we're going to export it to FBX so that we can use it in Substance Painter. So file, export with the low poly selected FBX, making sure we choose selection only. Uh, 7.1 is fine. And these are your important guys over here. The uh, the normals, the geometry, and all of that. That's what we're interested in. So pretty much default is fine. Uh, we don't need animation. We don't need cameras and stuff. So, okay. 
and I'm going to chuck this in here and I'm going to call it the Univ F S LP. So that's our low poly. Now I'll just select the other one and do exactly the same thing again. Only this is a high poly. Wonderful. Right, let's get into Substance Painter. Okay, so welcome to Substance Painter. And here we go. I am not an expert in this. I've actually only started using it fairly recently, but I've got enough idea because it's very similar to Photoshop. Um, but there's a, yeah, there's a few extra bits as well. So first of all, what I'm gonna do, I have my uh, low poly and a high poly here. I'm gonna drag my low poly into the scene. Um, and uh, the template, I'm just going to go with uh, what it's default to because we're going to change this later anyway. Um, and I'm going to set 4K because I want real high quality graphics. Uh, then I'm just going to select OpenGL. I believe Cinema 4D prefers OpenGL, but I think it works with either. So we'll press OK. This will now load up our Universal S model. Wow, look at that. Isn't that brilliant? The next thing we want to do is bake out all the information in the meshes. So we're going to go bake mesh maps. And the only one I'm not really interested in is ID because that's to be able to separate polygon areas and stuff. We're not worried about that right now. Um, and I'm gonna set 4K and it allows me to define a, a high poly mesh. So I'm gonna come to here and I'm gonna select my high poly mesh, pop that in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to bake. Okay, fantastic. So we now have a bunch of interesting uh, done maps. This is ready to be kind of messed about with and we're good to go. Now, the wonderful thing inside of Substance Painter is these smart materials. And as long as you've unwrapped your object, at least to a fairly decent degree, like we have here, you can just drop these on and they look amazing out of the box. So this steel painted, for example, if I chuck this on here, it just has to have a little think about it, but there, look at that, it looks so good. That is out of the box with no effort. It looks all scratched up, it looks like proper metal. That's absolutely brilliant what i would also like to do just to make it look that little bit more special is do something like uh put on maybe this bright steel and then right click on that and do add a black mask and then just like in photoshop this works like a uh you know like a a, a mask <laughs> well that's, that's exactly what it is um but i can come into here we've got a ton of interesting brushes but i can do artistic brushes and then what i can do is actually go around and draw kind of in oops that's a, a mixture of the controls. I can draw directly on it and it just looks so good. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go around my whole model and just give it an outline. I could use uh, one of the kind of built-in edge finding tools to do this, but I kind of like the idea of uh, doing it manually because it gives it that slightly more, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, it gives it that slightly, more organic feel or something. You know what I mean, right? But anyway, I won't make you watch me do all of this. Uh, I'll speed this up a bit for you. Right, okay, so we've done that. And the thing is, the, the, or the problem is with this software, I can mess with it for hours. There are so many different bits and pieces you can do. Like uh, there's a scratches one down here somewhere. Let me find it, uh, scratches. And, and, and if you come into here and make that a bit bigger, you can, uh, no, oh, I'm in the wrong. No, I need to do a paint uh, layer. That's right, oh, no, didn't wanna do that. There we go. Right, Ooh. we'll get there. See, and you can add all these kind of scratches and stuff. And there was a, a really nice one somewhere. Yeah, see, like these cracks and uh, you, you can make stuff just look so cool. Um, <laughs> honestly, I can play with this for hours. Ah, yeah, see, I mean, you can, you can even do like stitches going around and uh, let's just have a quick look under tools um there are some other things in here that are quite interesting you can do like bullet impacts so uh yeah there's a bullet impact in the top of it and uh, nails and screw heads 
boom, there's a, there's a screw head in there. It's just awesome. Um, these cracks, I think, look absolutely great. That You can uh, properly get some nice uh, detail in there with those and stuff. But anyway, so I don't want to spend too much time in here because otherwise this will just get boring. But you can do so much with this. I really, really like So I'm just going to do one final thing, which is just to come in here and put some scratches on. Um, I think this is really nice. You can just kind of click at it and it will add some scratches and, and stuff. So yeah, it looks great. So we can now export the textures. Um, oh, no, before we do that, we need to come in here. Just Let's just change the, the name. Uh, so you unvs, whatever. Um, just because I don't like using the, the, fray, the default texture name. Right, so uh, export, and I'm gonna choose where to put it. Uh, I'm gonna create a folder called text because that's what they'll end up in anyway select that folder make sure that they're definitely going to be 4k my output template i'm going to use document channels normals plus ao so let's do export okay so now that we have our textures we'll head back into cinema and uh, let's get them onto this model we could either import the fbx back in in a new scene or we could just use this one whatever the uh, the high poly we're not really worried about now we can get rid of we only use that for baking the textures so i want to i want to put this upright for a start and let's see what what we're going to do with this thing so let's start by creating a material and we're going to drag that material onto our object and then we're going to fill up the channels with the textures that we just rendered out of substance painter i have these here so i'm going to click and drag them into their appropriate places so texture for color let's put in our base color in there okay so that's cool that's looking like it's uh, about right let's just turn off that default specular so we can actually see what we're doing it's a bit blurry and that's because under editor the default size is really low we could put that up a bit let's go for 2k and then we can actually see what's going on in there and then we're going to do maybe the normals and we'll drop the OpenGL normals on there and then under color we'll do a layer and go into this layer and drop the AO on top. And this gives us all our ambient occlusion data that's baked into the texture itself. That's how that actually would look like. So what we'll do is we'll go into that and set that to multiply so that it just puts it over the top. Nice. And then our reflectance, I'm going to go and add a GGX reflection. And I'm just going to turn it down a bit. Under Fresnel, set that to dialectic. And my roughness... I'm not sure really. I think this is one of those where you have to kind of do it and tweak it until it's about right. I've got a roughness texture. I can pop that into there. Uh, that should help with some of it. And then under bump, I could chuck the height information in, but I don't think there's really a lot of data in there. We'll do the same in here as well, just to use it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for the texturing I would say. Let's uh, pop it into a scene. Now here you can create a light and a floor and whatever. I'm going to use Infidio Pro because it's quick. Uh, this is available on my website if you're interested in it. Um, we're around the other way here so I'm going to just flip round and I'm going to oh, and I'm going to turn my item around. So yeah Infidio Pro it's just an Infinity Studio that's like a three-point lighting system that's all rigged up for you so that you don't have to do it each time. And it gives pretty good results out of the box. I've spent a lot of time tweaking it to get it so it's kind of just right. So next, I'm going to, before I do all of that, let's just set up this lighting. And so I'm just going to rotate it so that it's in its right place. Uh, that's pretty cool looking. On my fill light, I'm going to set that to hard shadows. So it gives us a nice shadow casted on the floor. And uh, my floor, I want to change the color. I'm going to have something that's maybe a, like a bit of a cool blue color that goes off into a darker gradient. Uh, I want it to be darker than that, actually. Something like that. Uh, a really small amount of floor reflection, but quite blurry, maybe. And uh, we'll make the floor a bit bigger. Okay, and that's pretty much all I want to do there. So I'm going to counter here. Actually, my lighting, I just want to rotate just a little bit more. Do, 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 something like that. There we go. Right now, let's get a camera roughly into position. So it's going to be something like this. And let's slide the S so it's in the center. And let's get our camera on. And I'm going to zero out all of the date, the position of the camera like that. This is how I often do this if I want a dead straight camera. I then move that out to where I want it. And then I move it up until my item is nicely in view so something like that perfecto 
Okay, and now my camera, I want to set the focal distance to the metal. I'm gonna set the f-stop to something crazy low like 0.1. Then in my settings, I'm gonna make sure I'm on physical, depth of field is on, progressive is on, ambient occlusion is on, and I'm gonna ramp that up to 200 centimeters because I know that each one of those is 100, so I wanna push that a little bit further. Uh, and there we go, right, that's cool for that. So let's hit render and see what it looks like. Now I would say for a super quick job that didn't really take a lot of effort, that's come out really well. I think that's a really cool little model. It's very, very simple. Great way to practice uh, unwrapping and texturing and stuff like that. It looks pretty real. Uh, you know, the physical renderer in uh, cinema, I think as long as you do a good job on your textures, can look absolutely stunning. Okay, so I'm also now just going to quickly set it to be uh, that kind of resolution and let's hit this into our media renderer and there we go boom we made ourselves a universal s i just really enjoy making stuff that you can kind of learn some techniques and stuff through and uh, yeah i had a lot of fun there so anyway i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please do me a favor click that like button click the subscribe button if you hit the little bell, you'll get notifications when I put new videos up. We can all stay together as one big happy family. And I'm just really enjoying doing all of this sort of stuff. So I, 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 I yeah. So with that, I will say goodbye and I will see you in the next one. Bye.